first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me and for allowing me to participate in it. And as you can see, the topic of my presentation is Croatian historiography in World War I, which will, in a way, follow the presentations of uh, Dr. Solshak and Dr. Milic. Uh, first of all, it must be noted again that Croatian historiography since the Great War to the 1990s really sounded exception of the period during, during the World War II can hardly be regarded as an independent one because it was a part of Yugoslav historiography during the first and the second Yugoslavia. Of course, World War I was of great importance for both of these states, especially for the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, so the research of the Great War couldn't be left to the free scientific analysis if that is ever possible regarding that the ideological function of history is undeniable, so the influence of the politics and the ideology is always present in historiography. Uh, the interpretations of certain events, including the First World War, as such are numerous, and that is why the second part of this of the title has been formulated how to win a war by losing it. In doing so, I want to emphasize the fact that the outcome of the First World War uh, in Croatia has been perceived practically since its end as a victory, despite the fact that Croats, at least the absolute majority of them, fought on the defeated side. Therefore, along with the classic question, who to blame for the outbreak of the Great War as a key issue uh, in Croatia, we can pose the question, who won? Uh, this kind of situation resulted in still current debates, whether we were winners or losers, or the victory led us to another defeat in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. This irony has for a consequence some kind of avoidance of the research of the World War I, particularly with regard to the dominant narratives in both Yugoslavia, while it wasn't clear what would be politically legitimized uh, with that research. As I already said, the goal of this presentation is to analyze the Croatian historiography on the First World War, first in the context of the extreme twists and turns of the dominant narratives, which caused changes in the approach to the topic, and the <coughs> second goal is to analyze the influence of the dominant Western European historiographical trends on Croatian historiography regarding the study of World War I, or at least the compatibility between Croatian and Western <coughs> European uh, historiographies. In doing so, I'm going to use the classification made by British historian J. Winter and French historian Antoine Poulos, uh, who were already mentioned uh, uh, in the presentation of Dr. Swartz. Uh, they managed to identify three generations of historians of the First World War, within the French, English, and German historiography, despite the, differ the differences uh, in uh, historiographical schools and traditions. So, uh, considering the research of the World War I, we can single out four main periods within the Croatian historiography, which correspond to the changes of social political frameworks and to the changes of the dominant narratives. Uh, the first period is the one from 1980 to 1941, uh, during the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, or the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Uh, the second period uh, <coughs> is the one during the World War II and the historiography of the independent state of Croatia. The third period is the one from 1945 to 1990, uh, during the Socialist Yugoslavia. And the fourth one is the one after 1990, in the Republic of Croatia. Uh, during the, as I said, the first period is the one from 1980 to 1941, during the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes and the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. And in this period, the focus of historiography was placed on the state creation after the war, and the main goal was to just fight. Uh, in public, the state was often perceived as an enlarged Kingdom of Serbia, while the austro hungarian monarchy was labeled as a prison of nations. Therefore, ventures of its units, as well as of Croatian soldiers within them, did not enjoy great attention, which was also a result of the integration, integrationist nationalist policy. When they tried to find examples of non-Serbian victims in the creation of the new state for everyday political purposes, uh, the activities of the volunteer movement among the South Slavs who lived in the monarchy and the activities of the Yugoslav committee uh, were emphasized. A uh, little more open writing emerged only in the late 1930s, uh, which preceded the second identified period of the Croatian historiography, the one during the World War II and the historiography of the independent state of Croatia. At that time, due to the 
current war situation, special importance was given to the Croatian military heritage, including the First World War. However, it's interesting that even in that time doing so, the songs of Socha Front uh, was an undesirable topic until 1943 due to the alliance with the fascist Italy. Uh, basically, that was only a continuation of the negligence toward this part of the battlefield, which was very important for Croats, just like for the Slovenes, while it was neglected also during the interwar period, uh, since it was not part of the war for the Yugoslav unification, as well as due to the complicated relations between the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and the Kingdom of Italy. After the Second World War, Croatia became a part of the Socialist Yugoslavia, so this kind of celebratory approach to the Croatian military history was since 1945 possible only in Croatian diaspora. During the Second Yugoslavia, one of the main determinants that shaped the dominant narrative was anti-imperialism, which of course influenced strongly the perception of the World War I, so the monarchy was automatically negatively viewed, while the Yugoslav solution was failed. However, it must be noted that the World War I was, in general, rather neglected topic of, the, of research, especially in comparison to the Second World War, which resulted in the creation of Second Yugoslavia, so it had the function of confirmation of the new system. Uh, the some increase in interest in the World War I occurred for the 50th anniversary of the outbreak of the war, but nothing that significantly. In a relatively small number of papers on the Great War, the focus was mainly on the enemies of the monarchy or on the pro Yugoslav politicians, which enabled the positioning of Croats among the victors, while the participation of Croats on, Croats on the defeated side practically didn't exist, which was at some point also a result of the heavy mortgage of the Second World War uh, regarding the Croatian army and its military heritage in, the, uh, in that period. Uh, generally speaking, historians in Second World War were primarily interested in politics, similar, uh, similarly as during the interwar period, and in much lesser extent in economic or military issues. In doing so, the monarchy was often criticized not only because of the unresolved national issue of South Slavs within it, but due to the class issue also, which was in accordance with the socialist background of the dominant narrative. Also, considering all of this, it has to be noted that an aggravating circumstance for the, for the popularity of the World War I as a topic of research was the participation of Josip Broz Tito in the Osso Hungarian army during the war, and Tito was the holder of the central cult of personality. After the breakup of Yugoslavia, at first, there were no significant changes in terms of the popularity of the First World War for research, which lasted practically until the last couple of years, approaching the centenary. However, due to the major twist of the dominant narrative, the Great War, just like some other historical topics, was to some extent reinterpreted. But it's interesting that Croats, in those interpretations, basically remained victors, while they managed to form the state of Slovenians, Croats, and Serbs before the unification with the Kingdom of Serbia. Which, will, which has been particularly emphasized. Also, in the last 20 years, much more attention was given to the research of pro hybrid efforts among pro Croats during the war, as well as to the great Serbian tendencies. In the recent years, interest in the study of the war of has grown strongly, but the impression is that lots of things now have been conducted unplanningly and unsystemat unsystematically, especially regarding the overall conditions and the lack of money, just like in Slovenia. Uh, regarding the <coughs> second part of the presentation, the comparison between trends with new Croatian historiography on World War I with the Western European historiographic trends, as I already said, I, used the, I have used the analysis of Anton Prost and Jay Winter, who, in short, uh, argued that three different generations interpreted uh, the war within three historiographical configurations. The first one <coughs> in a 19th century context and explained the story through the decisions of individual actors. These scholars emphasized the nation and wrote history from the top down, focusing on generals, diplomats, and politicians, and ignoring common soldiers. Uh, the key issue was war guilt, so military and diplomatic history papers were most common, while there were practically no articles at all about economic and social aspects of the war. The second generation, which emerged during the 1960s and which witnessed World War II, 
emphasized social issues and class conflict, as well as the impact of collective actors uh, like soldiers, workers, and civilians. According to the Prost and Winter, uh, lots of historians of that time were under the influence of Marxism, uh, which inspired them to reintegrate history from above with the experience from uh, below of common soldiers and of common soldiers. They shifted their focus from the question of war guilt to war origins and war aims, and the key issue became the link between war and the socialist revolution. At this time, historical production was dominated by histories of social groups. Uh, with the collapse of communism and, and the fall of the Berlin Wall, historians of the labor movement became social historians of the war, and there was some kind of smooth transition with no real change of generations and many scholars passed easily from social to cultural and micro history. Winter and Prost used the term generation of 1992 to describe the third generation because in that year the World War I museum in Ferron was opened. Instead of considering origins of the war, uh, writers of the third generation focused on problems with the peace settlement that caused another war. Also, uh, with the decline of the Marxist paradigm, most historians no longer try to provide global explanations for historical events or to study an entire society in all its dimensions. Uh, regarding all of this, of course, the notion of historical configuration does not mean that one kind of history dominates all others. It's a question of emphasis. First, the emphasis was put on military and diplomatic history, then on social history, and later on cultural and micro history. But all these types of history were present in each configuration, while Cross and Winter also recognized dominant trends within each branch of historiography in each one of the three periods. But there is not enough time to talk about it any further. Right now, so back to the topic uh, regarding the Croatian historiography. These dominant trends can also be recognized. Uh, although this is a bit complicated uh, due to the relatively small total number of papers devoted to the Great War, so it's relatively hard to identify some trends and each paper can be indicated. As it has been already stated, during the interval years, the dominant topic of the research was related to the formation of the kingdom and the role of prominent politicians in that process. As in other European countries, immediately after the war, a large number of documents was published with the aim to justify the national role in the war, as well as to make influence on the non-resolved issues after the war, particularly those on the demarcation with neighboring countries in the context of peace agreements. As for the war itself, the focus was primarily on the successes of the Serbian army and the actions of the Yugoslav Committee. Uh, during the Second World War and the history of the independent state of Croatia, there, there were no significant changes in the methodological approaches to the study of the Great War, despite the complete ideological change. But the number of papers in general was very small due to its short duration and the war circumstances, so no significant, so no significant conclusions <coughs> can be opposed. In Socialist Yugoslavia, in line with the main trends, uh, the research of political ideas and national <coughs> at first continued to dominate the, the historiography like during the interwar period. However, during the 1970s and after, uh, in accordance with the second generation of Western European uh, historians, a number of papers on topics such as uh, uh, the spread of socialist ideas, especially among Yugoslav volunteers and prisoners in Russia, mutinies in the Austro Hungarian army and navy, desertion or the Green Cater, and so on, appeared. Also, particularly important became the foreign policy situation during the process of the creation of the Yugoslav state. Uh, the first major deviation from the dominant historical trends in Croatian historiography can be noticed during the 1990s when due to the extreme turn of the dominant narrative in Croatia, political history continued to dominate the research of the World War I. Only in recent years we can follow the increase in interest in the social, cultural and micro history, especially among younger historians, while the middle and older generation of historians are still heavily interested in questioning political issues. So to sum things up, uh, regarding the analysis of the Croatian historiography in the First World War, in the context of the extreme twists and turns of dominant narratives, it can be <coughs> concluded that those were primarily reflected in the choice of topics that have been studied by historians. So the participation of Croats within the defeated army during World War I 
was not particularly popular one after the 1990s. Uh, and even after that, the First World War remained relatively neglected topic of research due to the renewed interest in the Second World War. And because in the meanwhile, uh, we had another war from 1991 to 1995, uh, therefore, widespread claim in Western historiographies that the interest in World War II greatly surpasses that of the World War I is developed in even more radical form in Croatia. In a way, it leads us to the second part of the presentation and of the con conclusion, while the question on the impact of general historiographic trends on tendencies in Croatian historiography can be posed, or at least the question on the compatibility between Croatian and Western European historiographies, and in that context, of course, it has, it has to be noted that Croatian historiography uh, has been often, even from Croatian historians, perceived as, as a pretty closed and unopened one, but my conclusion regarding the study of the First World War is that the changes in dominant trends in Croatian uh, historiography were compatible with the changes in Western European historiographies. Based on that, we can pose the thesis that the influence of the foreign historiographic trends on Croatian historiography has been evident. All the changes have been occurring with some delays and in different extent, of course. That is particularly important while Croatian historiography has been usually compared uh, to other historiographies of the former Yugoslavia, especially with the Serbian, while the interpretations of some topic are often quite contradictory. Uh, and in doing so, the broader context is often missing. So the impression on their isolation and distance from the dominant world and European trends has been further emphasized. But also I will try to make this comparison uh, between Croatian and Serbian historiography on World War I uh, for the written ver version of the paper if there will be a publication of the proceeding from this conference. Uh, while Dr. Miratic already talked about it earlier, at this point, I can only uh, say something that I have found interesting. Uh, between those two historiographies, uh, while according to my insights, if I'm not wrong, uh, there is one thing similar after the 1990s uh, between those two uh, historiographies, or at least between some prominent, their some, their, some of their <coughs> prominent members, the Dr. Milic called them patriotic group. Uh, and that is the victim's myth, uh, which, the, which they act, uh, actually share regarding the World War I, as well as regarding the, uh, its outcome and the creation of the kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, of course, from different, <coughs> of course, from different standpoints. Uh, what they perceive it as a mistake in Croatia and in Serbia. Thank you very much for your attention.